this is Casey. Today, let's make this pencily look using Sigma 4D and Red Shift. So here's an apple which I grabbed from the asset browser. First, let's add a cloner and make it plan its child. I want to make this plan really small, like two by two. Then we need to set the cloner mode to object and drag our apple into this object slot. Now the orientation of this plan is wrong, let's change it to Z. There are also some intersections between these plans and Apple. We can avoid it by adding a push apart effector. I will just make it really subtle like this. Cool. We can increase the clone account a bit to let it cover the Apple. Let's also add a material to this plan. What I'm going to do next is to turn these plans into brush strokes. We can achieve this by manipulating the opacity channel of this material. Here I have some brush textures. We can for example drag this one to our node editor and feed it into the opacity channel. Now the plans have the shape of the brush. This is because the black areas of this image set the opacity to zero while the white areas remain the opacity at one. We can bring up the render view to check better. Cool, let's pick a red color. And now one thing I don't like is these black shadows and ambient occlusions which make these brushes feel very 3D. We can solve this problem by adding a redshift object tag to the cloner and overwrite its visibility. Uncheck the options like cast shadows, self shadows, cast AOs. And we can also get rid of these GIs too. Now we've got these flat brush strokes. It's looking much better. However, originally our apple have variations in color like dark red, light red, green, etc. But the brushes only have a solid red, which looks quite unnatural. So to match the color of the apple, what we can do is to add a shader effector to the cloner. We can turn off the scale and make sure we have effector color set as the color mode and we don't need to use alpha. Then let's go to the shading tab and in this shader slot, we want to load the base color texture of the apple. Since this texture is also linked from the asset browser, we can find it here and drag it to the shader directly. Now we have color changes in the viewports, but not in the render view. That's because we need to load the color information into the material. So let's add a color user data node and plug it to the color and choose MoGraph color in this attribute slot. Cool, now the brush color follows Apple's surface color. Additionally, I want to remove the Apple's bump map to make it look flatter. I've also noticed that this Apple material only has a reflection weight of 0.4. Let's apply the same value to the brush material to help it blend better with the surface. It's getting there, but let's make it look more interesting. With a 500 clone account, we can clearly see that these brushes are either vertical or horizontal, and they are all the same size. So let's add a random effector to introduce some rotation variation and also scale variation like this. We can further increase the size variety by duplicating this plan a few more times and give them different width and height. This one can be 1.5 by 1.5 and the other two can be 1 by 1. Also, choosing the random cloner mode can be a good idea. 
This is cool, but we may also want to have more brush shapes. Similarly, let's duplicate this brush material multiple times. Assign them to the corresponding planes and load different opacity maps into each. Now we can see we have different brush types here and there. Looking really nice. I think we can increase the clone account a bit more. Awesome. One further trick I often use to improve this look is to turn on the denoising. I have no idea how these modes exactly work, but I feel like OptiX mode works best. It can blur the render a bit, making the brush strokes blend more seamlessly with the object. If we want to get rid of this kind of overshoots and make the brushes wrap more closely to the curved surface, we can group this cloner and add a shrink wrap. We'll need to increase the segments of the plants. And maybe bring down the shrink wrap strengths. I think something like 30% can be good. So here's the difference with and without shrink wrap. After finishing all of this, we can apply the same setup to the stem. It's super straightforward. Let's duplicate this group and swap the object. We definitely don't need this many plants. The count of 50 is better. Also, no need to have shrink wrap. We can decrease the brush variations too. Next, I'm going to turn these plants into long stripes by tweaking some parameters in the random effector and the cloner transform tab so that our brushes can match the flow of the stem. The very last thing is to swap the shader texture. But in the stem material, we are using a gradient instead of an image texture. Let's actually save this gradient as a preset. Then select gradient in the shader slot and load this preset. Cool, now we have this nice pantley stem. And I just remembered that we haven't removed the bump map from the stem. Let's do that now. Awesome. That's all for the Cinema 4D and Redshift Pendley shading. Feel free to download the project files. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. See you next time.